All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are going to talk about Arcwing. This is going to be a sort of abridged history of Arcwing as a whole. That means over the course of its entire life. But most importantly, this video is going to be somewhat focusing on why the Itzel is currently the best Arcwing in the game just because it has Blink. And for that, we're going to talk about everything to do with Arcwing since its inception. So, way back in 2014, Arcwing was revealed. It was the big reveal at Tenno Live that year, and it was received pretty well. Because conceptually, and I think this stays true to this day, Arcwing is cool. But that's kind of the problem with Arcwing that we saw very quickly, is that it is conceptually cool but considerably less cool in practice. It has a lot of problems on, or it had a lot of problems. It still has a lot of these problems. There are many problems with Arcwing that have persisted since its release. The main thing being that it has an entirely separate progression track with all new mods. That is really a kick in the pants for any of the established players at the time, because if you had farmed up and Got, gotten huge if you had got yourself huge you did not want to start from zero again or at least many people did not in addition to that the initial game mode offering was basically just a translation of the current game modes you could play on land just considerably less fun because arcwing is not exactly as good as the main game of warframe just straight up in addition to that you only started with two arc wings, the Odonata and the Elytron. The Odonata has a shield, missiles, counter missiles, and then it's four, which pushes things. Kind of weak. The best ability there is a copycat of Volts 3, essentially. So that's kind of rough. Then you have the Elytron, which abilities include missiles, a smoke screen that is not very useful, missiles, and Big Missile, none of which are particularly useful except for the second missile, which is a big AoE missiles that was used to farm defense objectives. That is until the Itzel was introduced to the game. The Itzel is the first kind of success of Arcwing, period, because the Itzel actually has a relatively cohesive kit. It had Blink, which is, as we know, quite good. People enjoy going fast. It's a very fun ability, so that's a great start. And it has Penumbra. Most people don't even know what the other abilities of the Itzel are, I would assume, so I'm going to explain it. Penumbra makes you invisible as long as you do not move, but it does not get broken by you blinking around. Those two abilities synergize really well, and Penumbra was used to be in complete and total safety while you farmed tons of enemies in Grenier Interception so you could get all of the mods and shit that you needed and also get your stuff leveled. But with that, is the actual really important ability for the Itzel at the time was Cosmic Crush. So Cosmic Crush, for those that don't know, uh, Arcwing used to have literally no vacuum, so you would have to like very carefully like get near mods and like hope you picked them up and it was really wonky to control. Um, Cosmic Crush is basically an extremely large vacuum, so that would suck up all the loot and of course restore all your energy because it sucks up all the energy as well. So it was incredibly useful for actually getting anything fucking done within a reasonable amount of time. So it was massively useful and it remains massively useful to this day uh it is worth noting that one of the great things about cosmic crush if no one's doing it uh is that whenever you go to eidolons cosmic crush will suck up all of the stuff eidolons drop so you don't have to be like literally touching it to pick it up because that stuff doesn't get sucked up by vacuum cosmic crush will pick it up so that is an incredibly useful thing for speed running those missions and then we have the itzel's fourth ability which is fighter escort which is terrible and no one really use it but like the drones are kind of cute i guess so i'll give it a pass and that's all fine and good uh arcwing kind of stagnated and stayed what it was for a really long time uh and then we have the jordas verdict the jordas verdict was i suppose since it is no longer in service uh the best piece of arcwing content that they ever released it was the second raid uh and people who wanted to do the raids needed the arcwing stuff to learn and do it and generally, people would run whatever, and it didn't matter until they got a hold of the Amisha. The Amisha is what 
if Arkwing was a successful game type and not a successful bike or transportation, uh, would be actually the busted shit that probably needs to be nerfed. The Amisha, for those that don't know, has on its one, complete and total invulnerability for you and anyone else you cast it on. On its two, a giant defense bubble that also heals you and your entire team when enemies shoot it. On its three, it has essentially a giant fucking massive AoE Nova slow. And on its four, it has a shit ton of buffs go on that thing. But most importantly, it gives you all damage rage. What that means is that no matter what kind of damage you're taking, you get rage. So you get energy back for any damage that is incoming on you. All of that is fucking incredible. If that package of abilities was on a Warframe, I can almost guarantee that Trinity and Oberon would never see play again. It would absolutely and totally crush every support style Warframe we currently have access to. It would be no fucking contest. But the Emisha is not currently the best Arcwing. It was when the Jordis Verdict was around because the Jordis Verdict was the only thing that you would ever use Arcwing for. The open worlds did not exist yet. So, the Amisha goes there. It makes the Arcwing parts of that mission exceedingly easy. Uh, and it also basically makes it so that it's a lot easier to teach a lot of people to do that content. And I think the Amisha was actually purposefully designed to be insanely overpowered so that maybe more people would play Arcwing because it's kind of generally very hated. But then... We move kind of into the current era. So we had the Plains of Eidolon, uh, and then we got the Arcwing Launcher. And the Arcwing Launcher, kind of a huge pain in the ass to use because you have to build a bunch of that shit at the time. Uh, but it was the fastest way to get around the planes, pretty much, uh, unless you're, of course, counting Nova with a shitzillion energy and a bunch of energy pads and stuff. Uh, although, I think the Itzel is technically still actually faster than Nova doing that. Um, but they're pretty close, all things considered. And that is a pretty good use for Arcwing, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to do, and it's not really worth building those charges. And in PoE, the only real reason that you'd have to do a ton of that at the time, because it was like new and fresh and people just wouldn't mind running around, was to do the Eidolon runs of it, which of course that took a while to really come into its own and have the full three stack be done. So with the Arcwing launcher charges changing to be you get it, and then you just have it and it's instant use all the time, Arcwing became like actually accessible and very desirable to use in these open worlds because in PoE and Fortuna, the areas are really large, especially Fortuna. So if you want to get anywhere in any kind of reasonable amount of time, you slap on the Itzel, you go into Arcwing and you use Blink and then Blink over to wherever you're going. That is the fast way to get around. Could you use Nova or Zephyr or whatever? Yes. But the Itzel is a universal transportation option for all Warframes, which makes it incredibly appealing because you don't have to pick a specific Warframe to go do your open world stuff. And because none of the other Arc Wings matter for taxiing you around, there's no choice to be made. The Itzel is simply the best because it has Blink. We have entered into a time where the Jordis Verdict doesn't exist, and all of the base Arcwing content is useless. It doesn't matter. No one gives a fuck. It's all not very rewarding and a huge waste of your time outside of the first time you run the mission, just get the node completion. So the only use case left in the game and not by design for Arcwings is to taxi you around the open worlds, which makes Blink the best. In an actual like situation where all the other Arcwing content was good and we still had Jordis Verdict, for example, the Amisha would be fucking King Big Dick God of the stack everywhere except taxiing you around the open worlds. Where the Itzel would be best. Hooray for the Itzel. It has a niche use case. But the niche use case, or what should be a niche use case, is the only use case for Arcwings as they stand currently. This is not a problem with Blink being too good or anything. This is a problem with the rest of Arcwing being a completely and totally failed system that doesn't matter and no one cares about, like, at all. That's the reason that we've had the um, Arc Guns become a thing we can use on land 
because no one wants to fucking use them for the actual Arcwing missions. No one cares. People just want a big gun that they can use on land, and they're not particularly great for that, but at least people can get them leveled, uh, and they look cool, of course. So yeah, that's kind of like a brief history of uh, why the Itzel is currently the best Arcwing. For anyone that was wondering, I think a lot of this is like really obvious to most people, but I kind of just wanted to put a video out there um, talking about it on like why we are at where we are. And just to clarify, this is kind of the, the reason this video exists is because I don't think Blink needs to be nerfed in any way. If anything should happen, all of the arc wings should have Blink as their dodge. Like the dodge button should just be Blink, making it free and really fun to use. Because then you can just Blink about with any of the arc wings really fast, and that would be super fun. So yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of what's up. Hopefully this was enjoyable and maybe a fun history lesson for anyone that didn't really know the history of Arcwing. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow.